Well, you're back on Night Sounds. Barry and Joe here. Hey, Joe. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I've been a little distracted lately because I've been in class a lot of days in the class. evenings. Went back to school? What's up? Well, I'm calling it class. I'm um, currently in training to become a disaster area response team member for my city. Hooray! I actually went through that. Um, how long ago? Like I did that twelve years ago, I think. You did. You fun. did all yeah. the. You know, you had to learn how to put out a fire with a fire extinguisher and yep. triage people and learn yep. CPR. Oh and... man, it was a blast! Are you enjoying it so far? I'm having fun. We just had our our second uh, class where we uh, learned how to put out a fire. Okay. Did you get to use the hose? I got all my gear. I should bring my gear in and wear it. You know, in one of these episodes, I'll bring my gear. Next time I talk about it, I'll have all my gear. But I got my gear, my goggles, okay. my helmet. But you didn't answer my question. Did you get to use the hose? Got to use the, the fire extinguisher. Oh, just the extinguisher. You haven't gotten to the hose yet. No, no, no. Uh, there are three types of fire extinguishers based on the fire that you're putting out. You know, little little thing I learned. So I only got to work with the one water type. Uh, oh, okay. So, um, when I did it, it was like after we used figured out how to use the extinguishers and all that, and the different types of fires, um, as a special treat, they all let us use the big fire hose, and they strapped it on, and they opened it up. And they're like, "Let's see if you can handle it," and they opened it up full bore. Oh, it was such, it was so much fun. It was such a blast. That's anyway, helpful. okay, continue, continue. Well, no, and uh, after that class yesterday, or early earlier this morning, I had to go to the jail and get booked. I was processed oh, this morning. Man. Fingerprinted, photo put uh, taken of me, and uh, signed some paperwork, and I had to raise my right hand mm -hmm. and swear an oath to the Constitution that I would uphold the Constitution, both the state and the the America one. So, oh, man. both the California. Are you talking about the supreme the, law of the land, federal. the U.S. Constitution? Yeah, U.S. and Cal California. I had to do both. So, I am now officially sworn in as a DART team member, still going through my background check, but uh, pretty well, soon have, I will. You still have more training, right? Yeah, four more weeks of it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Then I'll uh, then I'll have my card carry and be able to stop traffic. <laughs> no, don't try to do that. You'll get arrested. Mm -hmm. um, have do at your training facility? Do they have the fire tower? No, we're doing it at Cal State University Channel Islands. So okay. it's not. It's do just in the classroom. Have, but no, they do don't. They have the fire tower that you have to clear, go mm -hmm. up and clear. They might in the final exam. Oh man, but it's, it's so much fun if you get to do that. <laughs> it's like four stories, and you got to like clear the warehouse, and you got to like pull out people who are unconscious because of smoke inhalation. Uh, so you got to like pull people out, and if you're if you're you're real lucky, um, sometimes they let you do a um, a body carry from uh, the second story down. So with the with the dummy, oh man, it was so much fun. It made me want to be a fireman all over again. But man, I'm so glad that I didn't go that route. I I don't think I'm really made for it every day. But man, it was a fun weekend. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, learning what it takes to be uh, you know an authority member, and it's been pretty fun here learning what to. But no, I encourage you if uh, if this pops up in your local community, take part of it. Every uh, community member should be well equipped to handle any type of disaster or emergency, whether it be in your house or in your community. And you know, Joe, maybe I'll grow up someday to be a police officer at a campsite. That sounds fun, doesn't it? A security guard? What's it called when you're a park ranger? That's the word oh, I'm looking oh, for. Oh, oh. Actually, that's interesting that you bring that up um, because aren't the park rangers part of the fish and game service in California? And if so, I have a connection for you. Oh my, my God, uncle, you my uncle was was the head of the California fish and fish and game and fish and wildlife and stuff and things. So if you ever if you ever do 
want to get into that, I can I can hook you up. You can talk to my uncle Chris. He's a really nice guy. <coughs> God, I'm all getting all choked up about your uncle Chris here. Sheesh. <laughs> get him on the horn. Well, maybe not because it seems like it's really tough to be a park ranger because there's a new California law that was passed. It's going to impose stiffer penalties on people who don't show up to their reserved campground spot. So if you call ahead and reserve a campground space and don't show up, that's a big problem, apparently. Why is that? Well, the they state, just give it away? It, well, it looks like they book six months in advance. So if, if you, uh, you want to book your campsite, you got to be way ahead of the game. And so they're, they're booked so far ahead that canceling at the last minute is like hard for them to uh, function because then there's a lot of empty, empty stalls and people that are oh, angry because I they understand. can't. I understand. You understand. That. You get it. You're a camper, oh, aren't you? Well, it, it, it's, it's really similar to what restaurants are going through right now with cancellations. So a lot of what, what a lot of restaurants are doing is they're upping their uh, cancellation fee. If you, if you cancel on a restaurant, you can get charged like 200 bucks. They're charging you for the entire meal. The campsites, especially in California, because I've, I've had to deal with this, trying to get a campsite at like Kern River or Yosemite, especially, it's almost impossible. Those site, those campsites go so fast the day that they open up. So they might have to start charging people like a significant amount of money if they do cancel. And the other thing they do, they need to do is they just need to, if you're not there and you don't sign in within, I don't know, six hours of your, of your camp, they just got to open it up to, to everybody else. So, yeah. well, they're blaming an outdated system and they're upgrading it, oh, but God. you can be charged if you no show your way through life. And uh, book stuff that you have no intention of using. That's like the jerkiest thing because you take in the opportunity from someone else when you book something and yeah. you don't show up. I want to go camping and I want it to be easier to get the campsite I want. There's like one specific campsite that my dad always used to take us to right by Crocodile Rock in on the Kern River. It's right up by Johnsondale Bridge. It's impossible to get that spot. And then every single time we go there, we end up in a different spot and that spot's always open. And I'm so mad. I just want to be in that spot one more time. How my dad used to take us to. It's the perfect spot. Overlooks the river. Oh man, it's like secluded and stuff. It's got trees around it. Oh, it's really nice. And it's because of these people who book and don't show, man. So right you're you're for the the fine, the penalty. Yeah. Man. You're your yeah. approval of it. I am. Well, I'm a, also a big proponent of um, I keep the plans that I make because I find that it's rude if I don't. Um, and then if I don't keep those plans, I am very uh, communicative with the other people involved because getting bailed on sucks, you know, and getting ghosted sucks. I mean, regardless of who it is or what it is, businesses don't like to get ghosted just as much as you don't. So be nice to people. So you're saying if we make plans six months in the future to do something, you'll actually, I can hold you accountable. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Like a Coheed and Cambria show that we were supposed to go to in October. That maybe? is so un-Californian of you. <laughs> what? <laughs> to stick to your uh, dates like that. So un-Californian of you. You're <sighs> supposed to cancel five minutes before no. when you book something six months ahead. Nah, Don't you know that's California that's being, etiquette? That's just being rude. You're supposed um, to honk after one second of the light turning no, green. Did you know? Being, uh, well, that I do, um, <laughs> but I don't cancel plans on people. <laughs> All right. Well, happy campers. This is Night Sounds.